Hey everybody, how you doing? I have here a Heathkit SP220 linear amplifier. Rated for 2KW input power. Uh, gonna go through it, fix it, do some modifications to it. It's like someone grounded the grids. They did a. <laughs> yeah, that has to be redone. Um, they used wire. It should be strap. Or at least shorter wire, not so long. You want the uh, lead length as short as possible. Keep the inductance as low as possible between the grids and ground. That's the bottom. I'll take the top off. A uh, customer said that uh, a rat or something had gotten into it. <laughs> so, um, it's like fan has been replaced. The wiring is all nasty. Ew. So, well, I'll take it apart and uh, we'll see what we're working with up in the top. Hey everybody, how you doing? Here's the view from the top inside. It's like uh it's at the market, the strap muffin fan from Radio Shack. Really nasty in here. I see uh evidence of uh the mouse or rat or whatever is living in here. I see droppings. Um well, this looks like there's some insulation or something. I don't know if it uh Somehow got to any of the wiring. Looks like it has an aftermarket board. Um, rectifier assembly board. Original plate transformer. Original filter capacitors. I'm gonna do some testing and uh, get to work. Hey everybody, how you doing? back here with the bottom of the SB220. Ended up getting the Harbach parts a couple days ago. I just love the Harbach kits. It makes an excellent product. They come with easy to follow instructions. He's always there to help you if you have a question. Just awesome kits. They really um, help keep uh, these old amplifiers live. Um, what less money buying a kit than trying to find the individual components and buying everything separately. So um, I've been using them for years. Um, I recommend them to everybody. I use them quite often in my customers' amplifiers. I went ahead and grounded the grids here. I used copper strap. Some people time together and use wire, braid, or whatever. <laughs> you want the path of inductance as low as possible between the grids and ground. By grounding the grids, you give uh, the grid a direct connection to ground, um, increases the tube gain. If you end up with a plate to grid short, brings it right to ground instead of through the choke that these came with stock. Um, ended up putting in a Herbach fan, had a muffin fan as you saw earlier, which was getting hot because it was so close to the tubes. Um, wasn't designed to be that close to heat like that. Uh, ended up fixing some cold solder joints over here in the relative output meter circuit. Um, it had a piece of wire that ran from these resistors over to, you know, well, it was one continuous piece. I ended up cutting it, um, soldering and heat shrinking a new piece of Teflon wire. Uh, the guy said there was a mouse in here. He had been storing it for a while with the cover off. So, the mouse looked like the mouse chewed on the wire and it ended up shorting the ground. I didn't see any other issues with it, so I'm just guessing that's what happened. We had a piece of RG8. Someone replaced the TR relay and they... <laughs> the connections were like they... The opposite, you know, the coax, coax connection should be on this side. That's right. So they ended up stretching the wires to get everything to the coax connection should be on the right side and the bias connection should be on the left so they ended up stretching all the wires and they um 
I guess they didn't know how to solder since a lot of the wire, oh actually every single wire you could just move it and it would pull right off. So I went ahead and resoldered all of them. Um, they had gotten the center conductor so hot on the RG8 or whatever it was that the foam came off down an inch and it was almost touching the chassis. They had some electrical tape there to try to protect it from shorting. So I put in a piece of RG142. I grounded it, and grounded it on either side with a piece of copper strap. Um, so you have a nice, he has a nice 50 ohm connection between the relay and the output connector, and the stuff's rated for Buku power, so I'll never have to worry about it failing. Um, I ended up doing the bias mod, which is really important. Uh, came with a um, force bias with voltage. Now it's a self bias. Uh, you know, if you have a filament to ground short, you'll end up taking out the center tap of the uh, filament transformer and trust me it's 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 a little bit of work to get that out plus the cost of the transformer so I ended up uh, getting rid of he had a bunch of twist ties twist like wire nut things ended up soldering and heat shrinking he had it's like he um when he was soldering he burnt off some of the insulation he did that here too so instead of just chaining that whole piece of wire I um you know I just put the tape back on. It didn't go all the way through, it's just an added layer of protection, but um, I ended up resoldering the connections on the breakers, changed the uh, uh, keying circuit capacitor. The old one was about to fail, it looked like it was popping, starting to pop, so I figured while I was in here I'd replace it. Um, what else did I do? So, oh, one thing you want to check on these things is the SO239 connectors, you want to make sure that you have resistance when you're plugging the PL59 in. I see a lot of times where these connections on the inside are just spread out and there's no resistance when you plug the PL59 in. So um, you end up with an open between the amplifier and the antenna or the amplifier and your transceiver. Um, so the worst thing you can do is have an open, you end up, your uh, the voltage on your um, output network in the amplifier will uh, skyrocket and that's how you end up losing well that's one way you end up losing a band switch um, you can also flash it too. I see a lot of people grounding grids one way or uh, you know then they don't do the they, they make it look pretty or whatever but they don't do these essential modifications I mean this bias mod is so simple um, saves you from having to replace the filament transformer or you know if you you know, if you ground the grids properly, it helps prevent a parasitic oscillation, which could take out the band switch or a tube. So, you know, ask for these mods if you're going to get your amp done. You know, this amp took about three or four hours. Um, you know, some people say, oh, he's not busy. He can get stuff done quick. It took about a week. Um, well, I had to wait for the kit. So it took about, you know, from getting it to finishing it, about a week and a half uh, business days. Uh, why so you'll say oh he's not busy well look at all these amplifiers I have here you know <laughs> lots of uh, lots of work to do here lots of parts lots of different things so so that's the bottom I will flip it over and show you the top hey everybody here's the top here's the Harbach filter capacitor bleeder rectifier assembly Beautiful kit. Put that together and I installed it. It already had the metering board installed. Whoever installed it butchered up the one of the secondary wires that go from the plate transformer. Um, so I lengthened it, put heat shrink on it uh, as insulation, lengthened it with some Teflon, just a little short about three quarter inch piece so that's good now it's nice and secure um what else added the glitch resistor these are crucial so if you have any sort of short in the b positive after the glitch resistor here on the tank circuit or in the tube it limits the fault current rewound the parasitic suppressor resistors i like using the carbon type less in, uh, inductance than others or so I read got rid of that heavy braided strap and put in the proper strap got rid of that 
uh, that's the plate blocking cap to plate choke connection. I got rid of that old style plate blocking capacitor, put in a fresh ceramic 5kV DC 1000 picofarad doorknob cap. Those are prone to failure, so I figured might as well change it while I'm in here. Um, I have literally a drawer full of them, so I just hook people up. <laughs> Uh, like I said, there was a mouse or something living in here. I cleaned it out a good amount. Um, you know, uh, if I were to totally disassemble the thing, it would have added a lot more labor. And the customer already has a lot in, into this amplifier. Um, you know, we had a, he, he basically paid what they sell for, and it had all these issues, so um, he has more into it. So I. Uh, you know, totally disassembling would have cost considerably more. I ended up cleaning the input rotary switch and the output rotary switch. Here's the beautiful Harbach replacement fan. So, I can do anything you want, you know, to these things. You know, if you want to make it a mono band for whatever band, 6 meters, 20, whatever, I can do that. I can change out the, um, air variable, plate tune cap over to a vacuum cap, uh, whatever, just boils down to money. Oh, I also replaced the meter lamps. Um, if it didn't have this board, I would put in meter protection diodes, but since it already has the them built onto this board, which is really nice, I don't need to do that. So, that's about it. Completed amp. Uh, just about 300 bucks worth of labor for all this work. Fast turnaround time, and uh, that's about it. Beautiful on the outside. So, there you go. Heathkit SP220. You guys have, uh, I'm sure, seen many videos of them in operation, so I'm not going to uh, waste my time with that. Some people like to drive them really hard to see more than they're supposed to do. It's very simple. You know, they're rated to do X amount of power, just stick by that. Uh, the 2000 watt rating is actually the input power rating, not the output power rating. So, if you run these things within the parameters that they're designed to run, they will last a long time, especially if you do all these simple modifications. Uh, the, you know, if you start pushing it, um, beating on it, um, flash a tube or you could end up taking out the band switch I mean all sorts of stuff uh, this guy actually drilled a hole in the front panel so he could adjust one of the slugs for one of the Pi input um, network coils so um, he put like a hole plug I don't know if you can see it but it's right there I don't know why people do that but you know it's simple to tune all of them well not simple you have to take the front panel down and the, hook up the proper non-inductive resistor from the cathode to ground and just feed it with your analyzer and you, you know key the tier relay you know manually just stick something in there and you can do it cold and you can set each one um, and adjust the values if you need to so that's about it thanks for watching any questions please go to my website I have a phone number on there you can call or text anytime I will get back to you as soon as possible